Ireland particularly has changed a lot in the last 25 years, and everyone will, will understand that. But that sense of that this world hasn't changed, and that makes it even lonelier. He's very aware of the world changing around him, but yet he's still quite lonely. Well, I suppose it's, it's very hard to change. I suppose you're, it's your environment that makes you change. I mean, if you're living in a house with someone that's 80 years of age, you're living in their, you know, it's their surroundings, it's, it's their life. So, yeah, he's living in 2012, but his life isn't 2012. He's living in the, li in the age. I mean, if you look at the furniture in the house, it's all like 70s, 80s retro type stuff. So it's kind of, I mean, he's living in, the, in, his, f in his father's world. And for me, it was kind of, that's what I want. Look, a lot of these people are kept at home. Them families were very big, 10, 11 kids. The rest of them went off to America and London, Australia to, 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 to do their thing. And there was always the one that was kept at home to mind the parents. And for me, that was an awful sad thing that that happened. Do you know what I mean? I t and I think it's a hard thing to say, but I think parents back then were quite selfish. You know, and, and then in some cases, it's totally different. Um, a husband might have died when they were very young and the, and the mother, you know, for herself, who, who didn't want to be alone, kept someone at home. So I suppose when you look at it from that point of view, you can kind of understand that, you know, from her point of view, how she might have wanted someone with her. But it's sad on all levels, I think, you know. To be look, I don't, look, nobody wants to be alone, do they? You know, and I think it's evident in that that he doesn't want to be. Can you talk about a little bit about how you came to find Joe? Joe, I was, Joe's from East Limerick, which is, uh, it's a, it's a very rural part of Ireland. And I was, went to see a play one night and I saw Joe in the play and I just said, that's my guy. Cause I was looking for somebody, um, for the film and I didn't want to, for me, it was very important for the, the character and the actor to be, um, fresh, to be new in the scene. Because I think if you saw that with a well-known actor, it's very hard to, you know, it's that type of a, of a of a character that if you knew the, the face you wouldn't be able to kind of identify with the world. So I found Joe, gave him the script. He rang me the following day. He said he loved it, and he found his own world in the script as he'll tell you himself. So if you want to yeah, say how you reacted to it, I suppose uh, yeah, uh, Jerry, Jerry uh, sent me on the script, and uh, I, I could empathise this character straight away because like Jerry, I grew up in a farm. And I know these characters, and from anybody who's living in the country in Ireland would see these guys driving around in cars, and you kind of get used to them when you get the script, and he, he just seemed to tap into it very much. Uh, and also another level then, uh, I think, uh, just before we started filming, about three weeks before we started filming, my own father died suddenly as well. And I was able, in a sense, strange way, be able to bring that to it as well, so it helped in that level as well. So it, 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 yeah, it helped it a lot, I think. And I think it's a, an amazing, wonderful performance, a great oh achievement. Um, and, uh, and I just want to say thanks for sticking with it, because there's always the one person that thinks it's the quiet man, when they think it's a film about a farmer in Ireland, and they come in expecting, do you know what I mean? And then they walk out. <laughs> so, they expect that. so thank you for sticking with it, I really appreciate it. No, I, I no, I couldn't because they're very odd people in Ireland. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's very hard to go to your aunt and your uncle who, uh, you know, filmmaking doesn't come into their world. You know, these are people that having a television is a luxury. You know, it's for watching the news and the weather and that's it. It's for nothing else. And for me to approach them to make a documentary it would have been the wrong thing to do. For me, it was always a fiction story. And for me, I could always like push the boundaries as well to, to, to kind of, I, for me, I think it's more impactful this way. Do you know what I mean? Because I think it's, Joe can bring so much to it. And, but no, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't, it never crossed my mind. I just think, for me, it might've been too close to my own heart to do something like that. Well, that's, look, that's, you can make that up yourself. I mean, that does, it's not for me to say who he's talking to. For me, he's, for me, he's, um, for me, he's, can, can be talking to anybody? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's the thing about it as well. It's just, we don't want to spoon feed people or anything like that. And you come to your own conclusions a little bit too, which is, I think we, we've been getting that with film a lot, you know, but to tell us what you should do with this and that and the other. And it's nice to be able to, to work it out yourself a little bit, I think, yeah. And for me, a big thing as well was, I mean, 
I could have easily gone down the route of having standing at a window looking out, saying nothing, and letting the audience make up their own mind. I think the human being finds honesty very unsettling. And if they see somebody on the screen being utterly honest with them, I think you can't help but be engaged. You know? It's like your friend telling you a good story about what happened on Saturday night. It's brilliant. Do you know? So it's kind of that's kind of it. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, they found it very uncomfortable in the sense, not that it was about their lives in a sense, but they watched it, they could relate to it, it made them sad. But there was one woman who brought her bachelor brother to see it, a again expecting probably the quiet man. And she told me, going home in the car, they didn't speak, or they didn't speak to each other for a week after it, because it was just kind of all his realities spilled out to her there and then. And I met another guy who walked out after 10 minutes and just said, sorry, this is too close to the bone for me. Which I suppose for my job, then it's job done, isn't it? Kind of in a sense, when you can provoke that reaction. But that's that was interesting. Yeah, it is, it, it is. But look, when he talks about loneliness, I think it, even for anybody, you can, you can empathize with that. Nobody wants to be alone, you know? I don't know if you saw a film uh, called Garage uh, by Lenny Abrahamson with Pat Sharp. That was that kind of gave me the confidence to kind of go, okay, there's a an audience for this type of stuff. Um, the Dardenne Brothers is probably another thing that I can. Again, it's what Joe said. Any filmmaker that doesn't spoon feed an audience, you know, for me, it was just kind of show less all the time, and I and th let an audience make up their own mind. Um, and that was kind of what we were trying to do with the father was that you never see him is that like sometimes if someone is causing you pain, you don't see them very much. And for me, it was to hide that guy behind the curtain that's causing all this pain. And when you don't see him, I think it's more impactful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose I, I obviously wrote the script and had it in a good kind of a position of what I wanted to do. And it's kind of when you've nobody financially backing you, you've kind of you've loads of freedom to do what you want and kind of this is what I'm gonna do in that way. I didn't have a lot of money, so what I did was I went to the local bank, which would be the credit union in Ireland, told them I was buying a car, which I wasn't. They gave me money. I went to four and a half thousand, I said grand, and uh, rang a bunch. We shot the film in seven days, and it was really intense, seven days, but we kind of planned it out and that was the thing. So we shot in seven days, did a rough cut, about a month later, I rang him. I said, do you want to come and see the car? And the bank, ma the <laughs> the bank manager came and he saw it. And he was like, all right, grand, good man. <laughs> so it was kind of, but it's nice to kind of, but sometimes it's that individual generosity from a stranger that gets you from A to B, you know? And in terms of, but in terms of the shoot, the question you asked was, it, was it, w it, it wasn't that tough because it was kind of, we knew the environment we were in. Um, we were on the farm for seven days. So from Joe's point of view, he's, he was milking the cows morning and evening for Mary, who owned the farm. So that was kind of, that was tough on him. But I think we kind of, uh, he was going method on that one. So it was kind of, it was tough, but we knew the environment so well that it was, it, it wasn't that hard. And we don't need three crew, uh, uh, DOP, focus puller, and a song guy. And that was it. And it's, I think, you can do a lot if you have a small team. And we just set out to do everything to the best of our ability. And I think that the great thing for me is that the film is doing its thing and no one once ever brings up production values. Because usually when a film costs a small amount of money like that, they always go, yeah, it's very good, but it's climbed here and there in places. But never in anything it's ever been brought up. So that was really positive from my point of view, you know, that we got that right. Well, for me, I suppose the the thing that uh, well, first of all, it was making the film and getting it made and getting it finished was number one. Number two, then was when I sat back and when I watched it, I said to myself, if anything comes out of this now, um, if people have neighbours alongside them that are elderly and that are alone, just drop in and say hello. It costs nothing, you know, and they'd appreciate that as much as anything. And I mean, because. Right now in Ireland, we you know we've drinking bands and you you know they're all good for for reasons and all that. But 
their touch with human contact is constantly being knocked down. I mean, you saw the scene there now where he went to the creamery and it was a machine that was giving him the ticket. 10, 15 years ago, you'd have two people there. One guy putting the thing into the tank, the other guy talking to him, signing the book, telling them how much liters he had. So for me, th their contact with humans, it's been, it's been cut down all the time. And, you know, if, if people can just go in and say hello to these people. And the third thing was, if you have a story to tell, just go out and do it, you know? Oh, it's, it's massive in Ireland. And I think Joe can say more about it. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, d there's a point, too, of people would say, then, okay, his father is dead now. Why doesn't he move out, this young man? But he, he got into such a routine with his life. And just uh, th th their routine is locked in it so much they can't get out anymore. And, and there's, there, is, there is no contact for them around community centers, schools, place uh, in the country, a lot of them have died. You know, the, the heart of the, the country is dying away and these people just trapped, they have nobody to turn to really, you know, so. And I think the other thing as well is that, you know, he mentions, this, the character <coughs> mentions it, is that, you know, he's uneducated. A lot of these people left school when they were 13, 14, 15 years of age. And now if you want a job in Ireland, the simplest job, they're looking for degrees and stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, for him to go out into the real world now, I mean, that's another film entirely in itself of how do you come from that type of world and come back into the where we are right now and try and bid into the world. So it's tough on them. It's tough on them. And the sad thing is a lot of them just, you know, weed out and die, you know. It's a sad thing. It's very sad. Well, I have uh, a project that I'm hoping to get going by the end of the year. I finished it. Uh, again, it's quite sobering. <laughs> it's, it's not hilarious, anyway, I'll put it like that. Uh, it has its moments. No, I, get, I don't know, I'm attracted to that type of, I don't know, I'm attracted to people in crisis. I don't know, for some reason. I think it's, it's really, I think, I think we're all in crisis. And I think that when you can see a person up on, up on the screen in front of you that you can relate to, I think they are the films that you always remember, you know? Uh, so the next one now is going, yeah, it's, 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 you know, same world, different character in an urban setting, but a little bit different. Could you just finally tell us a little bit about the journey of this film and, and maybe where it's going? Because I know it's got yeah. quite a momentum going. Yeah, no, it was amazing. We kind of, uh, we premiered in Galway in July. Uh, we didn't think we'd get in, honestly. We were kind of, Jesus, I booked out a cinema in Dublin. I didn't book out a cinema, booked out a screen in Dublin. I brought the two heads of the Galway Film Flat to see it. And, I, and uh, they saw it and they loved it, thank God. And it premiered in Galway. And then we got picked up for Telluride in America, which is a really great festival and stuff. And we went there with it. And then um, it's been in Busan in Korea. Played all last week over there. And uh, it's coming here and it's gone to Rome. And then it's gone to... Um, where else? Yeah, there's other. Pla it's been it's been a crazy it's been a crazy journey, and it's amazing the way it's reacting with audiences around the place. I mean, for this to play in Korea is kind of crazy in itself, you know, that that they would get it, but they got it really really well, you know. And the same thing with uh, America, we were uh, very surprised in America that they yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we yeah, they, they they picked up on the loneliness, the isolation, the looking after the parents, all of that kind of thing, you know. But it, it's the, it's just this isolation, loneliness. It's a key key worldwide, you know. It's whether you're living in the country or it can be in the city, you know. It, just on that level. Yeah, because we we were driving for seven hours from Albuquerque <coughs> up to Telluride, and Joe was saying it in the car. He was kind of going, "That's Jimmy Walsh there. That's Jimmy Walsh there." The people in the fields, you know, you could see him working farmers and. It's you no, know, I'm just delighted, and to get the chance to come here is amazing, and kind of so. Hopefully, now the journey isn't over. <laughs>